This is a production of PBS Charlotte. The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. Hi there. Welcome to this episode of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts and I'm really glad you're here today. We are going to talk about mm, crunchy things. We're going to talk about panko. What is panko? Panko is a Japanese breadcrumb and we are going to make some breaded chicken cutlets, we're going to make some breaded shrimp and we're going to fry it up and they're going to look like this when we're all done. Who cannot resist this kind of crunchy, crunchy, crunchy stuff? And one of the reasons we choose panko is because of the size of the flake and the crunch. Let's take a look at panko. I'm going to show you the differences between regular breadcrumbs and panko. So these are regular breadcrumbs. And you can see that they are very, very fine in their texture. Very common, very delicious. There's nothing wrong with regular breadcrumbs. However, when we go to the other side of the world, we have Japanese breadcrumbs. And like everything else, the Japanese do things differently. We have large flaky crumbs. Look at this. Look at how big and flaky these things are. We also have panko that can come a little bit larger. These are the extra large flakes. Look at this. Aren't they gorgeous? I mean, just yummy, 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 delicious. And when they get all fried up and looking like this, they're even better. Super crunchy, just super, super delicious. Now when you go to the store, you're going to be able to find panko in whole wheat. We have a whole wheat panko. We have panko that is just the regular large flake and the extra large flake. You can also get panko that has Italian seasonings in it. So you can still get your Italian favorites with that lovely, lovely big, big, big bread flake that comes with the panko. How do you spell panko? P-A-N-K-O, and they're sold in every grocery store you can find. I can't say every grocery store, but most grocery stores you're going to be able to find some panko. So what I want to get started with right now is I'm going to show you how we are going to make these delicious shrimp fingers. Now normally, you remember, when we do shrimp and we cook shrimp up, they curl up into like little bitty circles and commas and all kinds of circular shapes. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to cut the shrimp so that we have a beautiful long shrimp finger. We're going to do a standard breading procedure so we can do our chicken and then we're going to cook it up. We're not going to fry this today. We're going to actually oven fry it. We're going to put it in the oven. We're going to spray it down with a little pan spray so we have a low fat content. And I'm going to show you how to make a cabbage salad with a jinjo miso dressing that goes so good with these things. So let's get started on the shrimp. We're going to take our shrimp. The bigger the shrimp, the better. When you buy shrimp, when you hear numbers like 1620, that means there's 16 to 20 shrimp in a pound. And so the smaller the number, the larger the shrimp are going to be. So if you go to the store and you're finding shrimp that are named U10s, that means they're going to be really large and they're going to be 10 of them in a pound, which is quite big for shrimp. These are 1620s. This is my favorite size because it's a good size for an hors d'oeuvre. It's a good size for a lot of things. So what you're going to do, now you can see the shrimp and it has its curled shape on it already. So what we're going to do to make our shrimp finger is we're going to open it up this way. Remember, we've already peeled and deveined and we've already removed the intestinal tract. We don't want to eat that. Ew. We're going to take a nice little sharp paring knife and we're going to make some little slits right underneath here, not cutting all the way through. All we are doing is just opening this up like this so that the shrimp will lay down like this. Okay? Just like that. Now I'm going to do that a couple times so you can see that. We're going to open him up. And yeah, you're going to see a dark vein under here. You can pull that out if you like. It's not the intestinal tract, so you don't have to worry about it. Open it up and lay him out. I'm going to cut him a little bit more. If you feel any kind of resistance in them opening up, just give it another cut. I'm going to cut this one right here too, a little bit more. So that they lay down and they look like nice little shrimpies getting ready to go into finger licking good status. Okay, here we go. One more and then I'll show you how we're going to bread these with a standard breading procedure. Standard breading procedure is what makes 
breading so good and crispy and what makes some of these fried things just absolutely yummy and it's absolutely imperatively important when we're doing panko. See how they're laying out like this? So here we go. One last one. Then we'll show you what we're going to do with the breading procedure. Come on, guy. Sit up. Sit up. There we go. I'm going to cut him here. I'm going to cut him here. Just make a series of little cuts. I'm going to cut him one more time. And like I said, you can pull that little vein out if you want to. And then press them down on the cutting board so that they lay out in nice flat shapes. Okay? So next, we're going to turn them into these. How do you do that? Very easily. I'm going to take a little bit of salt. Now, season your product when you're doing a standard breading procedure. Don't season your flour. A lot of people will say, season your flour. And you put flour on your product and you have no control over how much of that seasoning is actually on your product. Okay? All you're going to do is going to take it and you're going to do it. This is into flour, egg wash. Now, your egg wash is a combination of water and egg all beaten up so it's liquidy like okay and there we go we got him already lay him out aren't these cute just take them and put them in the flour drizzle them off put them in the egg get them all nice and wet now let me tell you what this does okay so now we have a shrimp down here that because we just processed it it is still kind of moist on the outside of it Okay, so the whole point of putting this into flour is to remove that moisture. Okay, so you remove that moisture and then you put it in your egg wash and your egg wash gives your breadcrumbs something to stick to. Okay, and so this is how you make a breading on a product that will not come off. All right, sometimes when you go and you buy like, um, let's say frozen onion rings and they're a breaded product. And sometimes when you buy them and you cook them, the breading falls off. And the reason that happens is because there's a moisture barrier that happens between the actual product and the breading itself. And so when that happens, the breading will fall off because there's nothing there for it to stick to. So that's why we use the flour, that's why we use the egg, and that's why we use the breadcrumbs. Okay, so now all I'm going to do with these is I'm going to take them and give them a little bit of pan spray just right across the top. That helps them golden brown up in the oven. I'm going to take these and I'm going to put them in the oven. Now I'm going to put this in about a 400 degree oven. It's not going to take very long, probably 10 minutes at the most. Watch your oven because it's just one thing you just got to watch. So when they come out, we are going to have yummy, delicious, crispy shrimp. All right, so here's a fresh breading setup, and next we're going to do some chicken, all right? What I've done with the chicken, look at this. You know when you get chicken breasts in the store, they're nice and thick, right? So what we've done with these is we have taken these and we've literally, not cut them in half this way, we've cut them in half this way, so they're not quite so thick, okay? We're going to give these a little seasoning with some salt. You could add pepper if you like. Go ahead and lift this one up. Go ahead and put that into your flour. So you can see how these were together and we just sliced it, okay? We are going to go like this. Standard breading procedure. Flour, the same reason we did it with the shrimp, so that the breading will stick this way and then into the panko. We love panko. Oh my gosh, panko is just so awesome. If you guys have never tried panko before, you're in for a treat. And if you've tried panko before, this is just going to confirm your love of panko, okay? So, shake them off. Look how pretty they are. Nice, crispy, breaded. We're going to lay these on a sheet pan. We're going to do the other two. And once again, we're going to give them a little spray with the pan spray. And then we're going to put them in the oven and get them nice and crispy brown. And then while these are cooking in the oven, we are going to get busy making a ginger miso dressing. Oh my gosh, this is my favorite dressing in the world. Green Goddess next, I think, but definitely one of my top favorites. We're gonna make a cabbage salad to go with it, and then we're gonna plate this yummy, delicious stuff up, and then it's gonna be ready to eat. Yay! All right, see this? Ready to go. 
into the oven. Now if you wanted to avoid getting all the breading on your fingers so your fingers look like shrimp fingers, you can use one hand in the dry and one hand in the wet and that's usually what we do in a kitchen when we're doing an awful lot of this breading process. So for a ginger miso dressing, let's look at some ingredients. We're going to use some miso paste, some fresh garlic. We're going to use some fresh ginger, some rice wine vinegar. We're going to use some fresh cilantro and a couple of scallions. I love scallions. These are, I, I love these things. Ginger. Sometimes you got to peel ginger. Don't get a peeler. Get a spoon, okay? You're going to take your spoon and you're just going to go like this. And it's going to peel your ginger beautifully, okay? And that's all you got to do to peel your ginger. Scrape, scrape, scrape. You can see this area here where the ginger was cut. You can see it sort of heals itself over a little bit. When you go to the store and you buy ginger, you can usually buy ginger in something that looks like this. This is called a hand, um, like a hand, okay? When you buy a hand of ginger, um, if you don't want this much ginger in the store, break it off and buy what you want. Okay, there's no reason you can't break it off and buy what you need. Sometimes when you go in the store, you're going to see these big pieces of ginger and you don't need it. So just take what you need. But the other part of this is, is if you have any of this left over, just toss it right in your freezer and pull it out. And when you pull it out, you don't even have to peel it in order to use it. Um, the peel will just, it just, just sort of just incorporates into the ginger. It's just really great. So let me go ahead and finish this up. And then we're going to pop it into the blender along with some garlic. And this is the most amazing salad dressing because it's so easy to make and it is just packed with flavor. And it's wonderful for a marinade, it's wonderful for a dressing, it's wonderful for a dipping sauce. It's pretty, it's tasty, yummy, 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 all that stuff. Okay, so now I've got my ginger peeled. I'm not gonna just drop this knob into the blender because then it would take it forever to go ahead and get small. I'm just going to make a couple slices. And you see, you know, there, if there's bits of ginger peel left on there, not a big deal. But any moldy parts or any parts that look they're kind of funky, throw them out. Get your garlic. This is elephant garlic. <laughs> Isn't it huge? Look at that. Elephant garlic is gigantuan. All right, the thing difference between regular garlic and elephant garlic, elephant garlic is a lot milder in its flavor. So don't be put off by the giant size, okay? If you get the giant size, go, woohoo, look it, I got big garlic, and be happy about it. I'm gonna take my ginger and my garlic and I'm gonna drop it into my blender. I've got about two tablespoons of miso in there. You can find red miso paste, you can find white miso paste. I highly encourage you, if you are using miso, to use miso that is organic because it is a soybean product and soybeans are one of the things that are just mostly the GMO on the planet, so if you're concerned about GMOs, go with organic, okay? So I'm gonna talk to you about scallions for a second. When you buy scallions and they have this little root end on here, this is how much I love scallions. I will usually take about an inch of this bottom and I'll put it in a little dish of water. These little roots will grow and you'll see a little scallion start growing up out of the top then you take this and you put it in the dirt, and before you know it, you've got a whole field full of scallions growing once again. If you didn't want to grow your scallion, just trim off that root end right at the end. And what we're going to do, now folks, sometimes you see people just using the green parts of the scallion and leaving the white parts behind. This is so delicious. So why would you leave this behind? Yum, yum, yum. So because I'm putting these in the blender, I'm just going to hack them up to be smaller pieces. I'm going to take this whole kitten caboodle right here, just pick it all up, and it's going to be dropped into the blender. Bloop, bloop. I'm going to grab some cilantro. I got some fresh cilantro here. I'm going to just take it, I'm going to break off the top. Let that stay in there. When I'm doing my herbs at home, I'll take my cilantro, parsley, whatever it is I've got, and I'll leave them in a little glass in the refrigerator and break off what I need as I go so that they stay nice and fresh. Now we're gonna add some vinegar to this. What I'm using here is rice wine vinegar. It is rice wine vinegar that is seasoned with salt and sugar. It does come, it has a green top that is not seasoned, but there's a huge flavor difference between the seasoned and the unseasoned. So I'm going to add this 
maybe half a bottle in here. And then I'm going to blend it all together. And this is yummy, delicious. Did I say it was delicious? It is really delicious. That looks like it's bad enough. Put this lid on tight. And I'm going to start this off slow until it's completely smooth. I'm going to add one more thing to this. I'm going to add a little bit of sesame oil. This is the Asian sesame oil. And this is a toasted sesame oil. It's got a nice, nice toasted flavor. As opposed to the sesame oil that comes from like India, that sesame oil does not have any flavor. This one, the toasted sesame oil from Asia, has wonderful flavor. I'm going to add, now be careful with this, guys, because it is strong. And in addition to sesame oil, because a salad dressing needs oil, we're going to also add a little bit of regular salad oil. It doesn't have any flavor to it, just a little bit of a regular salad oil. Okay? There we go. Turn this on, just get this incorporated. Make sure it's nice and smooth. All right, so we're going to let this sit while we make the cabbage slaw that we're going to put all of this wonderful crunchy stuff on. You should smell this oven. It is just yummy. All right, I can't wait for lunch. I really can't. So for our slaw, we are going to take a nice curly cabbage. Now you can use any kind of cabbage you like. I really happen to like the Savoy cabbage because look at the definition on these leaves and look at what it looks like when it's all shredded up. Isn't it gorgeous? I mean it looks like that crinkle paper that you put in gift boxes, okay? But I wouldn't put this in a gift box. It would kind of stink after a while. Okay, so how are you going to do this? You're going to take your cabbage, you're going to cut it into a quarter and then all you're going to do is shred it. Nice long shreds. Now, I have noticed in the grocery store that they do sell cabbage already shredded. Could you use that? Oh yeah, you sure could. They have cabbage that is chopped into little bitty squares. Could you use that? Oh yeah, you certainly could. Could you buy whole cabbage and shred it yourself? Yes, you certainly could. Do you have to use cabbage for this? It just really adds so much to the salad. Yeah, you, you, this is awesome with cabbage. So yeah, cabbage is not an option. We got our cabbage there. Now notice how it's just all green. It's just green. So to this we're going to add some shredded carrots. You can take your carrots and you could shred them. You can do them on a microplane. You can use a little peeler. You can use them in a mandolin if you have one. If you have a little benny, you can use a little benny, which is a Japanese mandolin, keeping with the Asian theme. We're going to add some scallions, just going to add all those to that. We're going to take this, we're going to toss it up. There we go, toss it up. Let me get a pair of tongs to do this, it's going to be a lot easier. The next thing we're going to do guys, is we're going to take our dressing that we've made. And I love doing this beforehand so that it has an opportunity to sit. Ah, smell that, ah, it just smells great, ah, wonderful. These are my favorite flavors in the world. All right, so put this in here. We're going to take our tongs and toss this up. You want everything evenly coated. Now, we don't want this cabbage swimming in dressing. Whenever you put dressing on something, guys, we don't want it swimming. We just want the product actually just coated ever so lightly. So we're just adding all of that yummy flavor to this. I'm going to add a little bit more so that we can have more flavor. Now I'm also going to save a little bit of this to use as a dipping sauce. Because this, when we are talking about dipping, when we see our plate up, you're going to want to dip. You're going to have lots of good things to dip into. I'm going to stir this up again. Okay. And there we go. Our slaw is ready. You see, everything in here is coated. It is not, you can see on the bottom of the bowl, there's not a whole bunch of dressing sitting down there. You don't want that to happen. Something else you might want to realize about this is cabbage will do something that we call watering out. Cabbage has got a, a huge amount of water in it. It doesn't look like it, but it's got a huge amount of water in it. As you let this salad sit, you are going to notice that water is coming out of it and it, you are accumulating some water in the bottom of your bowl. 
So that is a natural thing that happens. So you want to dress this and get this. You don't want to have this sitting around like a day before you serve it because you're going to have a good amount of liquid coming out of the cabbage. To finish this off, we're going to take some lime and squeeze some lime over it. Let's take a couple of wedges and let's get some nice yummy lime juice on there because lime juice really accents the flavor of all of these things as well. All right, we're going to put the salad here. We're going to go ahead and get our chicken out and I'm going to show you how we're going to plate this up. All right, we are going to go ahead and get a nice little plate with a nice little garnish on it. Guys, don't just put your food on a plate and just leave it without a garnish. Which plate looks more appealing? The garnished one. So we're going to put a garnish on the plate, okay? The garnish can be something as simple as, as you can see, lemon and kale. But I'm going to do this one here so you can see how we're going to do this. Take a nice mound of your cabbage slaw and put it right there in the center. Chicken's coming out of the oven. <laughs> nice and crispy and golden brown. All right, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take a piece of this chicken, we're gonna put it on the cutting board. We're gonna take this and we are going to slice it. This is what we call a shingle. Just cut it into small little strips. Take your spatula. You're going to pick it up. And you are going to plate it onto your plate, just like that. Okay? And so you can have a nice, attractive presentation. Now, another thing that we're going to add to this plate to make it even more attractive, I got some kale chips. Kale chips, just put kale with a little bit of the miso dressing. Put them in the oven until they're crispy. It adds a beautiful dark green color to the plate. The other thing that we can add to this plate right now are some lemon wedges or some lime wedges to go on there. A couple of those on there. And how about something for a little bit of spice? We're going to use a little bit of sriracha. Take a little bit of sriracha and you can make a little squirt on the side. Just put a little bit of that on there and voila. Here we have our chicken. I'll plate it up. Okay, shrimp, shrimp, shrimp. Here we go. Lovely golden brown little bubbies. Look at these things. Okay, I want to show you something here. Remember how I talked we were going to do shrimp fingers. You can see if you don't make your cuts completely on that back side, you're going to get your shrimp curling on you. Okay? Does that make them inedible? No, it makes them curly fingers. Okay? So next we're going to take our plate. We have our garnished plate. We're going to take more of our slaw and we're going to put this lovely, lovely, lovely ginger cabbage slaw right over here next to our garnish. We're going to take some shrimp. We're just going to lay this across the top. Doesn't this look irresistible? I love it. Doesn't it look great? Look at this. And how many shrimp do you get in a portion? Typically with this size shrimp, we're going to do five, okay? Now this is also one of our chef things. We don't like doing things in even numbers, so we always try to do things in odd numbers. We think it makes a better presentation. If you try to tell us differently, we'll argue with you. So we like odd numbers. So there is our shrimp presentation. Isn't that yummy? Isn't that great? Can you not wait to just jump into this? Who doesn't like shrimp fingers? Who is not going to like chicken prepared this way? You can also take a little bit of this other condiment that we have that is very, very similar to the sriracha. And as you know, sriracha is a little spicy. This is called the sambal olic. And this is basically the crushed red pepper with some vinegar in it. And oh boy, is this stuff spicy, okay? But this is also a lovely, lovely dip with the shrimp as well. So we can put this on the side instead of using sriracha there. Now, here is something else that's going to totally blow your mind. What else can you do with this? Well, what in the world is this? Eggplant, okay? You can take eggplant, peel it, and cut it into wonderful little fingers. Do the same standard breading procedure that we did on the shrimp and on the chicken on eggplant and fry it up. Now, this one I did fry and have eggplant fries. And you're thinking, eggplant fries? Trust me, you got to try it. And the best thing to put with eggplant fries, soy sauce. 
low sodium soy sauce as the dipping. And if you didn't want to use low sodium soy sauce, well, look, we have some ginger miso dressing that's going to be just as delicious. So there you go. Some things you can do with panko. It's a wonderful way to add a crunchy coating to whatever it is you like to have. We got shrimp here, we have chicken, and a surprise eggplant, which is just absolutely really, really, really delicious. If you've never had eggplant done this way, I really suggest you run out, buy yourself one of these big purple things, and do it, because it's wonderful. It's really a great way of having it. So I hope you try these recipes. Thank you for watching our show today. You can grab our recipes off of our website at pbscharlotte.org. You can also email me at pamela.roberts at cpcc.edu. I love hearing from you. Try this. Let me know how it works out for you. I think your family is going to have a new fried favorite. Thank you for watching this episode, and we'll catch you next time on Charlotte Cooks. of PBS Charlotte.